Hark the bardic paladin Who sings and plays again He tells the tales of glory And weaves a magic story He'll join you at your table And ask you to share a fable Heroes of humble origin Villains who must be fought again No matter their skill or prowess The people in life are countless so we pray you heed our request. Enjoy this tale of sidekicks and sidequests. Sidequests and sidequests and sidequests. Episode 47 Digibrom Stone Song The Dwarf Hop Bard. Welcome to Sidekicks and Sidequests the Dungeons and Dragons podcast that helps to put humans back into humanity and breathe life into your campaign NPCs with backstory and bravado. That's right, we're building a world, one character at a time. I am your host, Kurt Krenwelge, the Bardic Paladin, and I'll be joining Mark Wilson's table in the Levitating Platter. <laughs> everyone welcome to another episode of sidekicks and side quests the best unofficial dungeons and dragons podcast that's out there in my humbly biased opinion i'm joined by another great fraternity brother of mine so why don't i turn the mic over and allow my guest to introduce himself and tell us what it is that you do well, hello. My name is Mark Wilson. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, I've been on other podcasts, but never a D&D podcast. So I will go ahead and corroborate the fact that this is the greatest D&D podcast out there or RPG <laughs> podcast, since I suppose a lot of this could be ported into other TTRPG settings. Exactly. But uh, yes, hello. So my name is Mark. I am in communications and I know Kurt through, uh, he mentioned the music fraternity that we both belong to. So that is sort of an extended family that a lot of us have throughout the country. People that we've either met and gotten to hang out with and make music with, or sometimes don't know at all, but sort of have that shared experience. Awesome. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you were part of national staff like years ago. Is that what it was? Yes, yes. So that's how a lot of people know me through the fraternity. Uh, Find Me Alpha Symphonium is the name of the fraternity uh, headquartered in Evansville, Indiana. It's uh, it's a nice town. It's a sleepy little town in uh, southwest Indiana. And uh, I really enjoyed my time on the staff there. I was director of communications from um, 2011 to 2014. So if you were active in the fraternity or both our collegiate chapters and alumni chapters at that time, you've probably heard from me through several different communications channels. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. The headquarters is a um, converted farmhouse there in, in Evansville. Mm. And it's, uh, you get to meet a lot of really cool people and a lot of great musicians too. So oh, yeah. it, was, it was a fun gig. I, I'm currently in Columbus, Ohio. I'm originally from Youngstown, went to Youngstown State. That's where I'm from. That's where I went to school originally. And uh, so a little bit closer back in Ohio now, but uh, still have a lot of friends there in Evansville as well. Awesome. Just so we don't uh, turn this into a Find Me Alpha Symphonia podcast, I have to ask you, do you currently or have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? What is Dungeons? Is, no, of course. Um, so I've played D&D a lot, uh, mostly 5th edition. That's really when I take started to take it seriously. Um, I like to say I don't take myself seriously, but I take D&D seriously. And so the... I guess, yeah, I've been, I, I DM a lot, I play a lot, and have played multiple editions, but not really that much. I just sort of dabbled in older, earlier editions, but my brother played back in the 80s, so I got to read through his books, and that was that was my first window into D&D. Oh, so AD&D days? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So oh, I actually, cool. until recently, when I re-gifted his old books to him that I ended up with somehow, I still had his, uh, like, old AD&D books from back from in the 80s. So I would just steal those from his room and just sort of pour over them. And I didn't understand what any of the stats were, but the, mm. the mythologies and the lore and the, the whole idiom, the whole fantasy idiom really appealed to me. Awesome. And certainly you're keeping busy with D&D nowadays because you have your own YouTube program on it. Is that correct? 
Yes. So it's it's a few different things. Uh, YouTube among them. So I run a I run a whole channel called Bumbling Through Dungeons, and it's if you go to if you go to the website bumblingthroughdungeons.com, that'll link through to all the other stuff that I do. The YouTube channel has been on hold recently because 2020 <laughs> happened, <laughs> and um, so went through as many others have been going through a number of transitions and so the youtube the, the youtube videos were put on hold for a while i'm actually going to be starting up again with those soon so if you find me on youtube if you're interested in dnd i hope you check that out the website has a blog and i also create uh some products for some some free some paid for fifth edition dnd available through the dm skill oh that's awesome Good. I, I wanted to make sure that we had that in there as part of what you do as well. So you yes. are a content creator in the tabletop role-playing game industry, as it were. Yep, absolutely. Perfect. Well, this show is called Sidekicks and Side Quests, so we always like to ask our guests, do you happen to have a favorite NPC from an RPG video game, etc.? And why are they your favorite sidekick? Sure. Um, so I'm going to go with one that a lot of people who are familiar with D&D will know and maybe love, maybe hate. And I think that's part of the appeal of this NPC, and that is Jarlaxle. His claim to fame was originally from the R.A. Salvatore books from the uh, the Dritzt novels, which I grew up with as well. And he's shown up in video games, he's shown up in books, and he's shown up in D&D modules now here in 5th edition. And I like him as an NPC because he's a mirror for whatever the party wants to reflect back at him. He can be as nefarious and devilish as you like and it still works within the character, but he also is, he's a hero, I think, but, or at least more goodly than than evil, but he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. And so I've used, I've actually used him as an NPC in two different campaigns, but he ended up relating to the parties in very different ways because their composition and the way they related to the world was so much different. So I like that aspect of it, where there are these sort of shades of gray with what he does. And then the other thing that I really like about Jarl Axel is that he enjoys just a sense of adventure and mystery. And so if you think of something outlandish to do with him as an NPC, it probably is going to work with the character. And that's the sort of excitement and fun that I'm looking for in adventures. So what supplements is this character in 5th edition? Because I, forgive me, I haven't read the R.A. Salvatore Dritz novel series, so I am unfamiliar with this NPC. Yeah, no worries. And it's actually so, as I've gotten more into some of the lore, like I never read the Ed Greenwood novels, so there was a whole side of the lore that I knew nothing about in D&D. But he is in, um, I think he shows up tangentially in a couple, I, I think he's in Out of the Abyss, but it's more of a cameo than anything. And he is potentially the main villain or antagonist in uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Mm. And you choose one of four villains in that one, and he's one of the potential. I don't think that's a spoiler because they're on the cover. So I think everybody oh, okay. knows that they're in the adventure. Um, but in one of the four potential main villains, and I think he's really the only villain, and again, this speaks to his nature a little bit. He's really the only villain that I could see some parties, some heroic parties, ultimately helping. They'd probably butt heads a little bit, but they might end up just fighting with him, or they might end up actually sympathizing with him and his cause a little bit. So there's a lot of different ways that you can take it. Interesting. So would you say ultimately he's kind of an anti-villain then? A little bit, yeah. He's a great foil to the heroes to sort of throw some of what they do back in their face with the realities of the world. He loves adventure, but I think he's a little bit of a realist because he realizes that, you know, you're not going to be able to get some things done without dealing with people that you might rather not. And then for the other half of the namesake of this show, do you happen to have a favorite side quest from RPG, video game, etc.? And why is it your favorite side quest? Sure. Uh, so the, for this one, I'm going to go back a ways. I'm going to I'm going to age myself a little bit here. And a lot of people have played games in the Elder Scrolls series. Very few have gone as far back as Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Most came in with like Morrowind uh, or some of the others. But back in this was mid mid 90s, maybe 96, somewhere in there, Daggerfall came out, and it was an absolutely massive world. But the problem was not a lot of it was connected. It wasn't really coherent. So there was a ton you could do, but there wasn't these narrative arcs and. I contracted lycanthropy. I became a, a werewolf. And this was a problem because like the AI hated you at that point mm -hmm. and like a town would find out about it. And so you had to learn to live as a werewolf and you weren't always a 
werewolf, so you could make it work, but you had to plan your video game life around this fact, and the game didn't really make it easy for you because they didn't have a lot of the structure that modern games do. Okay. And so dozens of hours into this, after I had sort of just resigned myself to this fact, I just got a letter talking about being, it, I don't even think it mentioned lycanthropy, just said like an end to your affliction. And it turned out to be this massive, like multi-part chained quest to cure my lycanthropy. And I was so invested in this because it was such a thorn in my side. <laughs> and it was, we, we talk a lot in RPGs and D&D about character driven quests, you know, things that are linked to a particular person's backstory or their personality or whatever it is. And with this, it was, that was my first taste of this because everything else was just sort of disjointed. Like, hey, go here, do this do a fetch quest, do a kill quest. Mm. It was fun at the time, but I didn't know anything else. And this was the first thing where I became really invested in it because it was tied to something that felt like a character trait at that point. So it was my first taste of that type of arc, that type of character arc, and something that I really enjoyed to this day. Not just that particular side quest, but what it helped teach me about what side quests could be. Um, you know, it became my entire focus of the game then when I got that letter. And became more interesting than the main plot just because it was so tied to everything that I had to do. So yeah, I love stuff like that. Hello everyone. I just want to take a moment to tell you about my first ever sponsor, Plus One EXP. Tony Vicinda is the mastermind behind this trifecta of triumph. He produces tabletop themed beard balms, beard themed tabletop RPGs, and helps to support additional tabletop content creators on Patreon. Now, each of his beard balms is flavored after the basic stats from D&D. Do you need some strength for your beard? Why, apply and feel yourself empowered with the scent of pine and cedar with a minty edge. If you're feeling rather charismatic, apply a balm of sweet-smelling amber, clove, and pipe tobacco. Each one of these balms is unique in its makeup. And of course, don't forget, Tony developed a whole RPG that allows you to harness your facial ferocity and hair-raising adventures. You can snag a copy of that game as well as a style stencil, enamel pin, or a map of the Whiskerverse. And finally, aside from all of the awesome interviews and actual plays Tony has on Plus One EXP, every purchase you make feeds into the Plus One Forward program, which supports small indie content creators to continue making amazing tabletop RPG content. So head on over to plusonexp.com that's plus one spelled out and exp.com in order to shop for these balms and games and more. And when you go to check out, use my affiliate code Randolph to save some coin on your purchase and to help support sidekicks and side quests. How else do you think our tavern keeper at the Levitating Platter is going to keep his silver beard so awesome? Once again, the code is Randolph, like how it's spelled on episode two and his write up in order to save on your order and help support the show. So thank you so much, and now, back to the podcast. And to round out the personal interview section here of the show, what are you passionate about and why? Sure. So I thought about this question a little bit and came up with creative work, and that takes a number of different forms for me and, and has taken different forms over the years. At one point, it was music. At one point, I probably could have called myself semi-professional, but now it's more, I'm, I'm more of an amateur hack mm -hmm. at, my, at my violin, which is my instrument, and it's been writing or graphic design, layout, and more recently, I've parlayed a lot of those skills into uh, the D&D &D projects that I do. So that's been that's been really fun. So some of it has been like the video work, but also the products that I get to put together, which is mixing sort of my nerdish love of D&D &D and some of these creative skills that I've been able to uh, piece together throughout my career. That's awesome. So really, you are a jack of all trades, it would seem. Or at least a number of them. I'm sure not all of them. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Now that we've learned a little bit about my guest, let's go ahead and make an NPC. Okay. Uh, before the show, had we decided that you were going to randomize a character or did you have a character you wanted to bring to the show? Um, I had one in mind. I'd be happy to randomize some aspects of them. Yeah, oh, that's fine. We can flip-flop between tables if we want. That's fine. Okay, sure. All right, All right cool. The name of the character is Digabrom Stonesong. And okay. I figured since we have the connection of music, I would make him a bard. 
and okay. he would be musically oriented. And this is this is a character that I've been stewing around for quite a while. I haven't had a chance to unleash him onto a D and D world, but he is a lyrical stylist who is best known for dwarf hop, dwarf hop, a, okay. a form of a form of dwarven rap that he goes around and tries to popularize with his group, the Songsmiths, okay. a group of dwarven rappers that are basically a Beastie Boys analog, playing on the pun of stone smiths and and the stereotypical dwarves being smiths and miners and things like that. So playing up on that trope, but taking it a very different direction. Cool. Seems like we've knocked off a few things already in the list. So we know the name, we know that he's a dwarf, and we know his job and role in society. So how old are you envisioning this character? Oh, that could be funny to randomize. Do we have an age? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me flip here. So if you want to roll for an age range, you would need to roll a d10. Oh, okay. I, I should have had some dice out, huh? Yeah, or uh, online dice uh, work, too. <laughs> okay. D10. Yes, sir. That is an eight. Eight. Oh, okay. Sorry. I uh, I read that wrong to you. It is actually supposed to be just a D8, not a D10. But you got the number. Uh, This would make him immortal. So we have an immortal <laughs> dwarf hip hopper uh, going yeah. around the world. Yeah, okay. So... Maybe this is his, um, he's been trying to do this for centuries now, and it hasn't caught on. And... Come on, guys, it's the hip new thing. I tell you, right, kids are going to exactly. love it. He keeps trying to reinvent himself with new bandmates, and it's just not happening. So. Oh, man, this is, this is great already. So now that we know that this dwarf and bard is immortal, let's describe his physical appearance. What are you envisioning now? If he's someone who's immortal, but he's always having to reinvent himself, when we see him, what are we going to see? Ooh, yeah. So he would probably, I mean, he would probably naturally be a gray beard by this point. Still has the beard since uh, dwarf, but he probably tries to hide that behind, like, um, just slayer level makeup, coloring his beard and things like that. He's got a lot of different sort of costume style appearances that he has. But yeah, I would say if he's immortal, I mean, he probably looks older and wizened a little bit, but he can still move around, obviously, because you just can't have him as like a decrepit thousand year old dwarf or if we can't move. <laughs> so so then at some point in his youth or adult life, then he was cursed with a gift of immortality. Can you think of any explanation or reason as to how this would be? Hmm. So an artifact, perhaps? Maybe an artifact. I'm thinking maybe like a fey creature who thought it would be funny to put a curse on him mm. where to break the curse. He had to like beat a god in a rap battle or something. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so he's just like trying to get the attention of demigods and stuff and probably failing miserably and just playing clubs. <laughs> the eternal artist struggle, I see. Yes, yes, the eternal struggling artist. This is getting too real. This is getting too real. <laughs> <laughs> um so what three adjectives would best describe Digabram Stone Song? I still think he's kind of jovial. Like the fact that he's immortal means that it changed my conception of him a little bit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's probably a pretty happy guy. He gets to roam the land, live out his life, not really having to worry about death. He's probably had a lot of different adventures. He's probably been with a lot of different groups. You know, he's probably been married multiple times, seen the world. So I imagine he's very knowledgeable and very jovial. And that's two out of three, and then mm, I can't. Two out think of three ain't bad, right? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's 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 about. I think that's as far as I'll get. Okay. Well, maybe perhaps later in the show we'll find that third adjective, uh, sure. and we'll plug it in the notes. What's a valuable item, a piece of lore, a secret, or some ideal or concept that's important to this NPC? Obviously, the immortality is probably a big secret. Maybe he lets people on to that. Maybe he doesn't. He probably has to move around a bit to like avoid notice of people who might recognize him like, oh, my, I'm an elf and my grandfather remembered you 2,000 years ago. And, <laughs> um, you're still around, that sort of thing. So that's probably his secret. And that's probably the thing he tries to hide the most. Probably tries to keep a youthful appearance knowing that, you know, 
music is a young man's game. <laughs> right. Well, that's an interesting secret that he has to keep as far as like, you know, oh, I can never stay in one place too long. The ladies, they love me, but I have to leave them. Especially you were talking about he's been married multiple times. Just imagine all those uh, ex-wives trying to hunt down child support from him or something like that. Oh, sorry, I'm off to the next gig. I can't. I don't know on. if he's I don't know if he's leaving the now. Hang on here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's leaving the wives. I think, you know, he's he's outliving them and eventually moving on. But yeah, oh, I, don't, I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's a charlatan. Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. So jovial and knowledgeable and like a good father figure. Like he's steadfast. He's not yeah, he's not one to cut and run. Steadfast. Sure, trustworthy. Absolutely. Okay. There we go. We found our third adjective. Oh man, so now I just think about like all the children he's had conceivably, conceivably. And um, <laughs> conceivably. Yeah. Probably some that he's traveled with and had in his band. So there's purveyors of dwarf hop throughout the land. This is getting into some very deep territory indeed, as far as we're thinking like all the lives he's lived and all the, the children that he's had to carry on his name. All the great, 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 great grand dwarven kids that he has to remember their birthdays to send him a gold piece on their birthday and stuff. Right. And he can, I mean, he can uh, make songs about people who lived hundreds of years ago and no one's going to know. And so he's got this great knowledge of, of stories and songs and things like that, too. So he's probably a bard's bard in that sense where he can, you know, even if Dwarf Hop is his uh, medium of choice, mm -hmm. uh, I imagine he's probably proficient in a number of, of uh, instruments as well. Obviously, he's had the time to kind of sit around and be like, I think I'm going to learn how to play the bagpipes today. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> what is a particular quest that Digabrom would be willing to hire or recruit player characters to go and do? Hopefully, it's not going to be the, oh, find me a demigod so I can have this rap battle and win and finally move on, is it? I think I, I think I got this one. So I had some ideas and now playing into what we created through the randomization, I think I got this one now. So he was touring and was doing really well. He was gaining some notoriety and he had two bandmates and they both sort of, they had a falling out. And his quest is that he wants, they're not talking to him. And his quest is that he wants the party to uh, find his bandmates and help them to reunite because he was really making some headway. He was making some progress with his music. And the one bandmate is just going through like a classical phase. And so he's not really feeling it. And he can be won over with like a really good rap. So if you challenge him to a rap battle and, you know, have him remember the, the power of the song that you can bring him back. And the other one, so this is me kind of thinking on the fly, mm -hmm. but if a Fae cursed him, mm -hmm. so the Fae might have an interest in just messing with him. And so I'm thinking the other like fell in love and left the group, but it wasn't it wasn't something that Digobrom is happy about. Not because like he's had band members leave and get married and things like that, but this person seemed really antagonistic and really, really wanting the, the group to break up. And so he wants the, the party to investigate why this is. And I think maybe it's either a fae in disguise or something like a succubus or an incubus in disguise who's tempting this person away to break up the group because the Fae is worried that Digabrom's doing too well. Mm, okay, interesting. So like a little two-parter side quest. At first in my head, I was envisioning the plot of Blues Brothers where it's like, ah, oh, we're getting the band back together. We're, sure, on, a mission sure, from, sure, yeah. we're on a mission from God. Yep, exactly. So, so yeah, the first part is, is Blues Brothers, exactly. Right. <laughs> but then the second part is investigate why this other band member left and then, oh, come to find out that the spouse of this other band member is actually some devilish creature in disguise. And the right. devilish creature was hired by the fey creature. So then if you were to keep Digabrom Stone song in your game, that's a tongue twister, and, <laughs> and have them be a reoccurring NPC that would be able to offer more side quests to the party, then it could be a, an eventual like, oh, hey, we figured out that this fey creature cursed you. He tells them the backstory. And then, hey, let's go find a way to break the curse or help you to find a way to fulfill it. And then you could be free and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it could be those could be one off quests, or I suppose they could lead to to other things for the party to do. And I imagine he's amassed quite a bit of wealth. So he would be in a position to um, make it rain. To re yeah, reward the party pretty generously. Absolutely. So Great yeah, that, 
or something. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. So I was going to ask what's going to be the reward for finding these two bandmates and getting them back into the group. What's going to be the reward? Yeah, I think probably that would be a, a generous sum of money and like an offer to write a song about them as they go on tour so that if the party's looking to make a name for themselves, that they'll have this per like a hype man essentially going around to the neighboring towns and cities and things like that, talking them up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you'd have like a whole rap group that's like hyping you up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That'd be pretty cool for your publicity. That'd, I think that'd be hilarious. Like, like, Hey, what, what town are you going to head to that town and just like walk in with a band, with a band <laughs> playing? Burr, 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 burr. I'm thinking John Cena. Burr, 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 burr. It's yeah. It's absolutely a WWE entrance at that point. So you just come swaggering into town and whether or not you deserve it. <laughs> Okay, and now we have to consider the flip-flop. What's going to happen if the players fail the quest to bring either of the two band members back, or they just straight up refuse? They're like, you're a crazy dwarf rapper guy. We don't want to have anything to do with you. What's going to be the consequence of that? Is the fey creature going to be involved or something in some way? Potentially. I, yeah, I don't know. I think that would be something that the DM could probably decide how, how deep down that rabbit hole they wanted to go. As far as if they fail, I don't think Digabron would be too sad. He'd, he'd be thankful that the party at least tried to help out. If they outright refuse, depending on how vindictive he's feeling, he might do the opposite and write a really scathing rap about them so that like bad rumors start to spread about them in the area. Ooh. Um, and so that could be something that he could hold over their head. Oh, man. He could keep singing that song for another 500 years. And so even the player character's descendants, generations from now are like, we can't ever get out from under that. My great, great grandfather refused this dwarven bard so long ago. Our family name's been ruined. Yeah. So if you're playing a campaign as like your character's grandson and you're still hearing about how your family name is <laughs> is tarnished. That could be a horrible way to <laughs> introduce your to, new to character. The part. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So you're good, then I'm good. We can go ahead and head into a random encounter. All right. So then this is the part where we get to bring Digabrom to life. And since he seems like a, a good sort, I think it's appropriate for my fighter, my traveling adventurer Duncan to be able to meet Digabrom Stone Song and the Song Smiths as they're touring going through the next town. And at this point, if they're split up, it might just be Digabrom. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Just want to take a moment to recognize another sponsor of the show, Reaper Miniatures. They have been Texas Titans of the tabletop industry since 1994. They're right here in my backyard, and they have an amazing warehouse and game store. They make everything from paints to gaming accessories, stream on Twitch with tutorials and interviews, and host the ReaperCon. This year, back in person from September 2nd to 5th, 2021 in Denton, Texas. Whatever system you're running, whatever game you're playing, Reaper has a miniature that has you covered. Want to include Randolph in your game? Then might I suggest looking at their catalog for SKU number 77661. Perhaps you need a Lord Grubbub. Check out SKU 02646. Are you in the market for your very own Skink Knows the Lich? Look no further than SKU number 77280. You know, every time you shop with them and you spend at least $40 on your purchase, they will give you a cool new mini for free. And this miniature of the month is always something new. And if you're wondering how you can enjoy the benefits from my sponsor, if you visit my website, you can find a link for our sponsorship and use my referral code link when you shop to help support Sidekicks and SideQuests and get you some savings. By clicking that link on my website, it helps to track the traffic that our show directs towards Reaper Miniatures. The more traffic, the more that our Texas powers will be able to combine. So again, go check the link out on my website in order to use my special referral code and be sure to follow Reaper Miniatures on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. And be sure to sign up for ReaperCon 2021 and tell them that Sidekicks and SideQuest sent you. So thank you very much to this sponsor and back to the podcast. 
So, having arrived in the latest town and inquiring with the local baron, thanks to a help from a local mason shifter that was able to give him the inside scoop on the baron and to better help him in his quest, Duncan finally, finally gets to retire and spend a night inside a tavern and inn. And as he's, uh, you know, getting his nice hot meal and his glass of ale, uh, he looks up at the stage and he can see this uh, interesting little looking dwarf character as he's uh getting ready to uh set up his next set and duncan is fairly situated close to the stage as he's starting to eat his meal and drink his ale but he's also kind of looking on curiously at this dwarf yeah so noticing duncan uh dig probably sidles up to him after a little while in between setting up some things says oh you look like the adventuring sort Hoping you can help this ship out of port. Uh, oh, mm, mm, sorry, let me wipe my mouth up. Yes, uh, he'll extend his hand. My name is Duncan. How, how do you do, G- good bard? <laughs> Name's Digabrum, doing well. The friends call me Dig, and right now I ain't doing a jig. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, yes, you are correct that I am the adventuring type. No no quest too big, no feet too small. Well, what? but what is it that I could could do to help you? <clears throat> and realizing that he's been that he's been doing uh, rhymes, he kind of clears his throat. <clears throat> Sorry, there force a habit with the rhymes. Um, anyway, was hoping you'd be willing to help out an old dwarf. My bandmates left. One said he didn't have the heart for it anymore. Won't talk to me, but oh, I know old Triple T. Spit a good rhyme against him, and he'll be back in the fold. What do you say? Would you be up for it? So you want me to go find one of your other bandmates and have him return to the group? If you don't mind. Uh, I don't really know anyone else in town, and he's he's not talking to me. But you know, big big strong man like yourself, you might be uh, you might help you might help out a little bit more with my other bandmate, Mickey. Uh, he's got a new love, and normally I'd be happy for him, but but there's something off there. Like they wanted like they wanted Mickey away for him, all, all away from his friends. Now, I'd be happy to give you quite a bit of my gold if and you look in on him to see if there's any funny business going on. I'm not sure I trust uh, I'm not sure I trust her, yeah? Hmm, I see. Well, uh, well certainly the, uh, the coinage would help as I'm often uh, on the road traveling, having to pay for lodgings. Yeah, I could check in on your two bandmates. That shouldn't be a problem. But, Good but- deal. Hey, I'll even, I'll even sweeten the pot for you. You stay for the show tonight. Listen to me. And I'm gonna crush it. You just watch, and then if if you do well, I'll write I'll, I'll write a song for you. They'll be singing it for centuries. You trust you me? Oh, that does sound amazing to have my own theme song. Yeah, yeah. You could even write some of the lyrics. Be happy to. Duncan is just kind of like flabbergasted at the promise of this, and he's like, "Yeah, all right, uh, very good. Uh, I I agree. I'll uh, yeah, I'll check out the set and." We'll, we'll go find these bandmates and we'll have them to you b- b- before the next day. Good, good, good. Hey, I gotta go on. You stick around after the show, yeah? Yeah. Scene. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man, I cannot imagine Duncan trying to rap, let alone me trying to rap. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. throwing that on a party who's not ready for it would probably be pretty hilarious, so... Yeah, and then a dungeon master having to figure out the best way to, um, you know, gauge the uh, the one bandmate that's like, all right, fine, I'll come back. And then obviously it's more uh, straightforward as far as like, oh, the other bandmate with the spouse that's actually a demon creature, like that's a little more straightforward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a couple different types of quests. And I think that uh, if a party felt like they were more suited to one or the other, they could maybe just handle one or the other or a DM could throw just one or the other at them. But uh, I think it might be kind of cool to have both because they are very different problems. Sure. And especially if they're local. I mean, I guess it wasn't uh, necessarily uh, explained in our little vignette, but it's possible that, you know, they could just be in town. And he's like, you know, I've been here. I've been stuck here because, you know, they're in here in town, but they won't talk to me. And I, you know, I don't feel comfortable going on until I get them back in the band or something. Right. And I think even if it's not the same town, it's it's close by. So it's somewhere where he knows that they're at. So, so you, he could point the party toward them and it wouldn't be you know it wouldn't be like weeks of travel or something you have to go to the other side of the world to go find this guy. right yeah exactly ah, forget that <laughs> i'm not gonna do that that's too much work i need you to travel two months 
to have a rap battle with the dwarf you've never met. That would, I mean, that sounds like a perfect D&D quest, but I don't think it would make too much sense. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, here, as we're heading into the final thoughts section of the show, what did you think of your time on Sidekicks and SideQuests? So I had a blast. So it was uh, nice to catch up. And I, you know, was thrilled to, um, that when you reached out, once you realized that I was involved in D&D and RPGs and stuff like that. So this was fun. I, I as I told you, I was, I co-hosted a podcast years ago for World of Warcraft for a little while. It's still technically going, but they have one episode like every six months or so and so that was a lot of fun for me and I really hadn't been back in the podcasting game for probably eight years now and so fun to fun to hop back on with you and see what see what comes of this and and share it with uh, share it with my friends awesome well this last part of the final thoughts is me turning the soapbox over to you so go ahead and plug what you want to plug your projects your causes and uh, where can we find you on the internet to keep up with you yeah, so um, we, we overlapped, we, we may have accidentally overlapped a little bit with this in the beginning talking about D&D, but I do have a website that links through to everything that I do for, it's really a gaming channel. I talk, I talk some about uh, board gaming and other uh, tabletop role-playing games. It's primarily focused on D&D. So if you just go to bumblingthroughdungeons.com or, or if you search for it, the YouTube channel will come up, the website will come up. And that's the easiest way to find me. I'm at BT Dungeons on Twitter. And like I said, I've got a blog, I've got a YouTube channel. I make DMs, Guild products. I have a lot of fun with it. As I said earlier, I try not to take myself seriously, but I take my, my work seriously. So I try to put um, a lot of creative passion into everything that I do. And the whole notion behind Bumbling Through Dungeons is that I don't know all of the answers, but I enjoy finding them through play and through, you know, experimenting with running the game and playing the game. And so it's bumbling through that process, but coming out on the other end better off for it and just sharing some of those stories in video format and in my blogs and things like that. So it's it's been a passion project for me. And, um, you know, even as trying as 2020 has been for many of us, and it's been no exception for me at times, you know, I hope everyone listening to this is doing well. And yeah, I think that's really about I think that's really about it. You mentioned causes as well. So there are probably too many good causes out there to mention, but I would say in a general sense, you know, if you're listening to this, thank you for everything that you do to help inclusion and diversity in our shared hobby. If you're listening to this, I'm guessing you like role-playing games and Dungeons and Dragons. So thank you for everything you do to keep our hobby diverse and inclusive and fun for everyone. Um, that's that's one of my big things. You know, you play with friends, but when you do anything in the creator space, you're part of a larger community and you learn that in a hurry. So that's been increasingly important to me, um, seeing everything happening in 2020, not just in the world, but also within the hobby. So yeah, awesome. Thank you, Mark, so much for taking time out of your busy day for coming on our podcast. And uh, I'd be happy to have you back again in the future. You'll be listening to this episode sometime in 2021, because I've been very proficient and busy during this quarantine time. You know, we'll keep the show going for as long oh, wow. as time will allow me. So hope to have all of our guests back multiple times. So we'll definitely catch you next time. Yeah. yeah. And Thank you. I'll be happy to come back. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sidekicks and Side Quests. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and Overcast. Or feel free to save the RSS feed to use the app of your choice. Visit our website, sidekicksandsidequests.com, for links, write ups of the NPCs, and to learn more about the show and the guests who have been on it. To stay up to date and interact via social media, you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit by searching for Side KQ Podcast. I would love to talk D&D and showcase your fan art stories of how you used our NPCs, discussions, and commentary. If you would like to hail the bod, send an email to sidekicksandsidequests at gmail.com. To help this show be the resource it's meant to be, I ask that you please leave a review on iTunes to help spread the word. And share our show with your friends and family. Whether you're a veteran player or an aspiring dungeon master, there's something here for everyone, and I want to hear about it. Sidekicks and SideQuests is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy, meaning I'm not approved or endorsed by Wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast, copyright Wizards of the Coast, LLC. Thank you for your support, 
and I'll see you at the pub next time. Bar to rock on one, two, one, two, three, four.